next 60 minutes i'm going to take this topic which is a pretty controversial topic but very important topic and that is on adjuvants in infertility so what are adjuvants you see in case everyone speaks the same language as me everyone has grown up in country like me uh, and, and in case anyone is of my age so whenever you used to buy some vegetables to at some vegetable vendor you used to buy some potatoes and onions and tell him give me some dhania give me give me some mirchi as the token so you used to give us add on something to whatever you have bought so whenever you buy something you would have something added on to that and they are called add ons the so basic treatment basic management in case we add on something to make it more attractive make it better it becomes add on but here the issue is that whatever you add on it adds on to the money also in case you go to a vegetable vendor and take some mint leaves or some uh, green chilies as com as complimentary from him they are actually add ons which save money but these add ons are expensive and so they are becoming controversial that's the topic for today so uh, to make it simple i went to the internet merriam webster wanted to find out what are adjuvants actually how do they define adjuvants and they found that it is anything which can help or facilitate as an ingredient maybe a drug maybe a method maybe a protocol which can be used in, as an adjunct to chemotherapy any sort of therapy or a surgery and which can enhance our outcome or it can modify the action of the principal ingredients so whatever we add which is going to improve our outcome that's an adjuvant so let's take an example all of you i like to ask this question from all of you and uh, you just put on your mic and say give your comment in few seconds hi ana yes or no suppose we offer you this cup of coffee this is a cup of coffee which is being vended somewhere am i audible to you on Yes. yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much, guys, <laughs> girls and guys. So we can get, get this cup of coffee. And now this coffee looks pretty nice. It's a hospital. Somebody, some hospital. Somebody is having coffee. But now we say something different. We want to add something more to this coffee, and we make it coffee number two. Same coffee, change the cup, add some nice things to it. This becomes coffee number two. So what would you like to have? Coffee number one or coffee number two? Two. 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 All two. Even I love two. But two has but one problem. It gives you 500 calories. So otherwise, two is the best one to have. Lovely. Lovely. Lovely, everyone. That's the right answer you have given. But remember, when we add these lovely things here, it will add 500 calories and add rupees 100 to the price. Plus GST. Yeah. That's one thing we have to keep it in mind. Background up. Across the world, so many million babies have taken birth due to IVF. But the live birth is somewhere between 90 and 22 percent. This I've taken from the latest article from Mohan Kamat. Very nice article he has written. And when we have a low success rate, we have a lot of psychological stress for the couples and they want to do something more. Kya kare, that we increase by 2 or 3%. These are few figures I could get from the internet. And here again, I assure you that by the time the lecture ends, you will all get some beautiful articles, the, the recent articles on adjuvants on your mailbox. That's what we do normally also. So uh, here comes the whole concept of the adjuvants again. Adjuvants means that we'll, when you look at when we have low success rate and high cost of IVF, average cost of IVF is around 1.5 lakh rupees, whatever we say, but we keep adding ads on here, we keep adding something to it and make it 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees. IUI will touch around 20,000 rupees on average. So success is poor, 13% or 50% and the cost is skyrocketing. Something to do more, something to improve their result something to sprinkle on that lovely coffee which you get from the hospital, some cookies or some nice herbs or some lime we put on that and we make it a nice coffee, good looking coffee and people want something more and you want to do something more and in that we are shifting towards clinical adjuvants. 
remember that many of these interventions are in the nascent stage they are beginning to cookies are there but these cookies and whatever we are adding adding brown sugar whatever we add as complemented into the coffee some sprinkles some herbs they are still in the nascent developmental stage we still don't know whether they really work on work on us or not so in case we take that lovely cup of coffee number 2 what is the main problem with this coffee number 1 can someone make in someone contribute to it calories are added hi could you speak louder calories calories so very nice sandhya how are you sandhya Fine, good to see you early morning so it can add to the calories money is okay people have money we tell people are no problem bachcha chahiye ki khet chahiye apna khet bech kar i've seen people selling their tractors their properties for an ivf they'll get money in case we tell them but that is also wrong but calories is the main problem in place of giving us a good feel good factor they are harming us this is what happens with many of the adjuvants so let's look at the safety factor look at the pressing factor and move ahead three terms will come into play very very frequently sometimes people say adjuvant sometimes they say adjunct sometimes they say add on therapy so all those lovely cookies which were being sprinkled can be any of these three things just remember that it can be an agent tool or a procedure which we can do to improve the ivf or iui success rate over and above the way we are doing it we going to improve the outcome why are you talking about it actually they are very nice coffee is very very nice we are very happy this is a buzz in the market buzz in the market that they make a problem so few days back someone told me to lose weight he says sir you have gained lot of weight now you must lose weight i said okay i lose weight what to do he says as if you also take 250 ml of water 10 times a day i said okay very good i'll do that he said that take detox water i was wondering what is this detox water what is the detox water went to the water you add one of these things make a take a jar of flask of water add one of these funny funny things peaches or um, grapes or something and that becomes a detox water so for everything and water is a detox water nowadays that's what i want to tell then why not ivf but they have come in a hurried manner to some extent and as they come in a hurried manner they their clinical evidence is still questionable many of these randomized trials have been done and they found that in some cases they are adding calories they may be how here again i tell all of you that we are not here to tell you what you want to do or what you want to achieve we are only here to tell you as a school master no i am here with you for some time as a school master as your younger brother as a friend to tell you what is right for the patients this decision will be all yours all over the world this thing is spreading wherever you go you'll find that drugs spreading they're all nutraceuticals they're also called nutraceuticals because they don't need any approval for making them anybody can make nutraceuticals you see you can you can make it yourself also in case dr sarika choudhary wants to make nutraceuticals he can start making from tomorrow there is no fda approval required that's the beauty of nutraceuticals and we all buy some of you all want to buy anything which looks exotic and is exotically packed you want to buy it so patient expectations market forces online information age appears to be driving add-ons so just think about what i'm saying it may be multiple companies which are selling it online multivitamins they want to sell you cod liver oil and blah 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 all detoxing drugs so we want to give you something which is new so came an article from the new york times does anything work 
evidence lacking in every add on newly analyzed this is no way to treat patients desperate for a baby this is what the paper said this made me think and i chose this topic normally i always take up a topic which is of clinical utility i am a basically a worker hath se kaam karta hu work with the hand i don't like to teach theory this is the first theory lecture i am taking for my people i always tell them go and read yourself but this topic is very intriguing so i want you to read this i want you to read this this paragraph this will cost between 100 pounds to 3500 pounds on a course of ivf second read this 26 out of 27 add-ons for not effective think about it what i'm telling you just think and then forget about it take your own call <clears throat> lovely news special report implantation adapts don't add up Don't add up. They don't work. Ashray adds it. Ashray came into play now. Ashray and HFEA came into play, and they said, "Okay, let's get into it." And they have a beautiful scientific committee in their country which works on that. Oh, they are very clear people. Um, somehow, they do things in a very pragmatic way. And the best part is that Indians are working for them. That's the best part. And in our country, we are not agreeing to them. It's all about. dollars and pounds and money let's see how much is correct how much is wrong. let's not believe these numbers what i have told you let's not believe it let's go with an open mind today we will hit the topic with an open mind so we have 282 people logged in 282 is a good number to start with and thank you very much everyone to logging in and i think now is the time to take the hit the topic you should know about something called hfe hfe is a society in uk which talks about embryology talks about embryology and ethics it's an authority i keep we have around 5 hours lecture for our all our batches in women which we talk about icmr guidelines to so hfe are their guidelines it's an act act means you can punish them hold them by the ear so do you all do you all guys remember the difference between rules and regulations pull tell me anyone yes sir yes karima hi yes sir are you very fine the difference between rules and regulations Yes, sir. So at the uh, at the stage when the rules are in the form of a draft and they are not approved by the parliament, uh, they cannot be used as a legal tool. Uh, when they are approved, they become uh, an act, and they become uh, approved by the Supreme Court. Then they can be, can be used as the law against the wrong things. It becomes punishable. It becomes punishable. Regulation yes, becomes yes. punishable. So HFEA is a punishable act. Okay, okay, fine, great, Karima. Good to see you after a long time. Thank you, sir. I don't teach theory much, but here I am teaching you theory. I have referred to few lovely, lovely, lovely articles, and this one is from my very good friend Mohan. Uh, Mohan is fantastic. Look, let's look at his article. Clinical adjuvants in vitro fertilization is what Mohan has written. i have referred to an article this is the article which is basically from uk and it talks about adjuvants in ibf what works what it doesn't work and this is basically from bfs bfs means it's from british fertility society adjuvants in art this is again an article from india very very nice article if you get time read about it but we'll be sending you also today Very nice article by Dr. Sohani Verma. I liked it in our journal of IFS. Very nice article she has written. Review article. And this is the article from BFS. I got around eight or ten of them. They'll be all sent to you by the time the lecture is over. 
have you all got the resonance uh, for in your mailbox by now just check and let me know yes sir yes yes sir we got it yes thank yes, you sir. yes so big sir. compliments to puja and team yes so, sir antioxidant antioxidants for male self fertility the cochrane review before i move ahead i think you should all know about rcts what is the rct randomized control trial simple concept is that we have we can have people who are suffering have who got a problem we divide them into many groups as many groups we want to or two groups one group we are giving some sort of a placebo or some advice and then other group we start adding something to it so here the start point is the same we divide the same person or we take twins and then one person we will give x one person will give y randomized groups we will make and then we look at the outcome it's called a randomized control trial and each of us similar person has been assigned to different groups this is very very important i won't touch upon this but you must read about rct when you have time just spend 5 minutes on your tab and read about rct traffic light concept i'm very fond of traffic light concept I teach people red amber and green same thing has been applied by hfea now to their work whatever we do should be either red and like actually like the like the concept amber or green even in our own lives we should rate ourselves is it right is it okay or it should or it should not be done so what can't be done can be red just plus minus it can be amber green is go ahead so somebody who dieting for him detox water is the best thing to have i've learned green amber means having a parotta or something with butter on sunday morning can be an okay but having such cappuccino coffee which i showed you 500 calories or having a burger is a red red amber green the traffic light light concept you have to understand now here we come to the traffic light concept in terms of what hfe has said to so look at this i want you to read this thing yourself this is for you you read this i'm saying you're sipping my coffee read this this will change your life the way you look at your clinical medicine we have more than one minimum two rcts favoring a concept it is a green conflicting evidence from mercedes somebody says cappuccino is as good as americano americano is a black coffee americano you take to lose weight and cappuccino and mocha you take to increase weight <clears throat> if somebody says that the both are both are equally good then it is a number if somebody says that cappuccino is bad for health it is right it is a green evidence and then red no mercedes only on this particular thing till now so we are not sure whether we should do it or not whether people should spend money or not but here again word of caution always remember that whatever we do things change what is right today may be a problem tomorrow we are not sure so whatever i am telling you today is as of today we feel like that and tomorrow is going to become different it's going to change we were teaching our batch on ixi i spent 2 hours on indications of ixi the people were actually cursing the why am i talking so much on ixi indications out of the 13 indications sorry 11 indications given by asrm they have recommended ixi in only two things and the answers given by everyone was nine people were favoring nine indications they were not hearing we normally have a debate we make people talk in our classes so let's people talk about this and they were more in favor of this xc for all xc for all xc for all 
that's the way things are and that's the way complications are in our mind so let's discuss what is right what is wrong and call would be yours so understanding the perspective you're a doctor you want better outcome <laughs> you want better outcome so you've come for this class early morning 8:30 people say sir we can't come at 8:30 take a class at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock it is we do at 11 o'clock we'll have 400 people for our classes but i say no it doesn't suit me i can only take it at 8:30 because then i have to go to my opd see my patient that's my perspective doctors want to do and so you've come to the class to learn something more you want to learn something better and become a better person do something more you want to have some research element kuch naya kare try something nice same ibf same iui do something nice but you also know do no harm this you all know you also know that whatever we do should have a reproducible outcome it should be good and should be auditable and then we have to know that we should be having need to treat as we were having a debate about an xc on an issue which everyone said we should do yes sir i am very clearly right that you do 30 cases of xc one will benefit rest 29 more won't benefit and 29 will spend rupees 15000 for xc so when you do need for treat it doesn't fit into need for treat this is what we keep chatting with our hybrid batches so you have to understand this right and wrong concept look at the patient's perspective they say that they have very high expectations expectations can be a concern may not be a concern they want counseling and hand holding they have got a failed ivf even to say are this time we will do time lapse imaging for you we will do this we will do this and they feel very happy this doctor is so nice he is giving me some exotic technique for me i can tell you that 7 out of 10 patient want want from me that i should do something exotic for them which i decline they go away they go away the doctor is a duffer but after one more failure they all come back to me all seven come back to me so there is a place for truth and this is what my, all my people founded and nearly 80 people have joined they all revert back that talking truth also helps counseling and hand holding is important tell them what is right what is wrong for them the market is full of things remember patient also knows that they are not expendable don't experiment upon them have the guts and courage to tell the patient that i am writing you medicines of 30000 for 3 months and evidence is very 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 query are you willing show them the amber or red what is red today will become green you see the red light red light will become green amber same thing in the life we keep changing things keep changing what is red today immediately will become amber then green amber will always become red so things are changing but we need to tell people that they keep changing but presently it is red for the situation have courage to tell this thing to your patient scientific and clinical advances advisory committee sc aac keep this in your mind this is one good place to go and normally visit these societies site and they give you a lot of logic into this in case anyone from us was trained from uk we will talk about this thing more frequently the responsibilities and use of add-ons in fertility services a consensus statement you can see that so many people so many societies joined and made a consensus they were actually getting sick what is happening people are spending 350 pounds for a case and it is not working so they all get got down together all the big societies and gave some ev- evidence over them and this evidence i'm going to discuss today coming to the female infertility we are all using these add-ons to increase egg reserve we say egg reserve will increase in case i give dhea we give androgen gel so many things 
is going to increase. We give something for, we give growth hormone and multiple things. Then we give a lot of things for endometrium. Starting from, starting from PRP, we start giving them, we start, we start doing scratching, we do hysteroscopies, we instill a um, lot of things. GCSA we are instilling. So we're doing multiple things to improve the endometrium, aspirin, sildenafil. Then we are giving things to increase the uterine blood flow. We give arginine and multiple things. A lot of people give immunomodulators. They feel that in case we start giving immunomodulators, like uh, we give uh, things like steroids, we give uh, lipids, and we build our patient rupees 30,000, and patients are happy that you do something very, very nice. They are, but in the end, does it work or does it harm? This is what we have to see. Now, gentlemen and ladies, I say gentlemen because there will be very few gentlemen here. We'll take a count. So I would request, let's have a small consensus. I want all the all the gentlemen here to write yes on the chat box. Let's see how many of, uh, out of you know, 286 here, let's see how many are gentlemen and how many are our women. So let's take a ratio of people who are in infertility business. So now, adjuvants for ovary and response. What we can do for ovaries to make our ovaries strong? We can do artificial oocyte activation and bill our patients to pay 15,000. We can use DHEA for three months. Every company has brought out some sort of DHEA and selling it for three to four months. No, not every woman, even school going girl, college going girl, the people are being putting on DHA. DHA is the ovarian rejuvenation. Any, any patient coming will have DHA. Like every pregnant woman will have folic acid, every woman will have some sort of a DHA. Or DHA may be a part of what they are taking. Testosterone, which I'm also using nowadays, we get some gels and some applications. These all things can improve the ovarian reserve or the response. We give growth hormone four units for around 10 days. We think growth hormone works. But formin we are adding to improve the quality. Basically, they all work on follicular genesis and improve the quality of the follicles. They increase the number of FSH receptors. They increase FSH response so that we have more E2 formin. Basically, androgens are converted, converted, converted into E2. So we increase androgens, increase the response, so we have more. <coughs> Antioxidants are in abundance. Then to improve the embryo quality, to improve the implantation, we have got time-lapse imaging. We do that and build our patient 25,000 rupees. We use embryo glue and charge patient 10,000 rupees. We are very fond of acid hatching. You have laser? Laser hai, tocha center hai. And everyone, patient coming, laser will give you a good outcome. Let's do laser. Patients are demanding laser now. We have found patients who can't even sign. They say, Aapke paas, do you have laser with you? Only then I'll come to you. I'm wondering, how do they know so much about laser? So does laser work or not? Does freeze all cycles work or not? I'm again telling Red will become amber, amber will become green. So let's see how we look at the scenario today. One abortion, second abortion when people want a nuclear screening. Just do my PGD. Is it right or wrong? Who's telling them to undergo PGD testing? I don't know, but they all want PGD. So in case you know, you should know that PGD in case you are not aware of, PGT can be annual ID, it can be for gene mutations, it can be structural relocations. Three types of them are there. So we're talking about PGT annual ID, or initially it was called PGS, or what is written here. Then autologous endometrial co-culture, funny things, I don't know. Adjuvants to improve implantation, we are giving estrogens to people, we give them a lot of uh, hormones. We give everyone a lot of aspirin. 
given to people is it important to give the people to increase implantation vasodilators like arginine sildenafil you try in relaxant like etosiban a lot of people gave some gave paroxicams and the little scratching has become vogue anyone who's not conceiving simple we do a hysteroscopy and do we do scratching for you this is good for you and bill them rupees 60000 yoga and meditation poor things poor alternative therapies that that you went and this i feel uh, from my point of view they are actually green but no one talks about them in case we have with us today dr reema dada she can actually talk about these things but this is what actually can work but we don't talk about it we talk, talk about all exotic things we want to talk about big things we don't talk about intralipids GCSF, PRP, intrauterine HCG administration. We want to talk about autologous peripheral blood mononuclear cell. I still have difficulty in reading them. I don't know how you feel about it. IVIG, TNF factor, corticosteroids, blah blah blah. I'll take a halt a few seconds here. Would anyone of you like to add any more? factor for the female factor in fertility any one of you would like to add anything more which i have skipped here so we can talk about them the era test form era yes i missed era era i didn't touch because uh, era was a different uh, technology but era I, i deliberately skipped thank you so much era is also an adjuvant who said era who the said deepika yeah deepika i fully agree with you era is one of the tests But era I definitely skipped, and uh, I removed it myself. But era is again costing rupees fifty thousand, and uh, a debatable thing. Yes, era I'll place it in an amber zone, and uh, I think you're right. Thank you so melatonin. much. Melatonin. What? We are adding melatonin. Melatonin is also an adjuvant. Very very right. Melatonin I also melatonin I missed actually. It didn't come to my mind. Uh, for female, I missed it. Yes. Thank you. Coq. Coq Actually, this coq and melatonin are the part of antioxidants. In case you remember, I have I I have, I wrote something called antioxidant cell. Uh, antioxidant cell. Mm, here, you see these antioxidants, but I should elaborate on this. So, melatonin, coqs are part of antioxidants. Sildenafil. Sildenafil, sir. Sildenafil, I have already covered, ma'am. Sildenafil. Ah, uh, fine. Iodinescetol. exactly they are all antioxidants category very good so we have carnitine arginine myosetol we have melatonin uh, these all things sir vitamin d vitamin d very good they are all dha dha very good fantastic so acupuncture sir acupuncture again acupuncture is there <laughs> sorry i have so much to learn from you people so much to learn i'll improve my slide next time thank you so much for guiding me good i'll make the molar i know it lovely lovely everybody so now thank you so much everyone so now let's move on thanks for giving me this break of few seconds prp prp yeah prp gcsf scratching stem cell therapy sir ha so, uh, yeah that is a stem is is a mononuclear fine stem cell therapy can be written very good very good yes good i think that sums it up and very very nice thank you very much now coming to let's see what the hfea says it is given in amber color to the oocyte activation now it is being offered routinely to the people and even coming for ivf we do their thing that should not be done it's an amber amber means tell the people that it may not work that's all you can do it amber is always in a cusp uh, nokia 7.1 is raising hands you can always come on the mic and speak no problem at all so amber coming to so artificial egg activation is an amber and this means that plus minus tell your people do it 
elective egg freezing elective freezing of all cycles cryo freezing of all the cycles is again an amber this is no longer the outcome no longer the right method to do giving some give, giving somebody an hyaluronan enriched media is also an amber it is not full thing time lapse incubation is also an amber now just remember endometrial scratching and gcsf installation they are all amber so there is not much of evidence over about them they are all debatable what are green things green things are the ones which you are doing it routinely antagonist cycle agonist cycle uh, giving folic acid to the people when they are trying to conceive using triggers doing a particular protocol of ivf in the laboratory doing their proper culture they are all green so i'm not talking about green parts i'm only picking up amber and red look at the red this will interest you i want you to read it yourself read yourself quickly just go through it and after you have done with i will move ahead so this is no evidence actually no evidence at all <clears throat> it is rated red so all these intralipids and steroids and everything prednisolone tnf these all drugs are being given to the patients have got actually no role iv igs have no role they are red but actually red means it's a red don't try red thing amber you may try giving aneuploidy testing for day 5 embryos red until it's an indication don't do offer pgt aneuploidy so don't offer screening it is red so i have just taken this print out again uh, from the same slide just read it that immunological testing is red using some sort of media which can improve implantation is amber intrauterine culture is red artificial activation is amber and everything is amber and assisted hatching routine is red assisted assisted hatching is red this we have to know aneuploidy screening is red and time lapse imaging i also feel it is on the red from my side because it doesn't give you much much benefit with a with the money which you spend you spend 1 crore on that equipment then it doesn't do magic for you coming to male infertility we never spoke about the male because male actually could do no wrong male were always taken as the people who had no problems ever so looking at the male everything was fine males comes comes into play when the embryo's quality goes bad like this now the male comes into play then then we talk about the male otherwise male can never age male can have multiple wives male should have such healthy diet and be have all those antioxidant from the food but now when the male is act, eating like this a lot of rois are being generated it's a male we are thinking about adding some nutraceuticals initially males were not being treated that actively sperms are sleeping they are tired old we want to give them energy so they are the energizers which we are adding and more so when they are drinking they are smoking they are late night parties covid has always had made all the males gain weight and then multiple sexual problems are coming people are taking health drinks they're losing their sperm count mobile phones and those things are coming and this is the common covid post covid pandemic phenomena these all things they lead to these problems and now time has come to look after the male look at their varicose veins do their ultrasounds carry out icsi if required but icsi how to do when to do and so comes the man the man has finally arrived ivf was always a women's world but now men are surpassing the women the industry is shifting towards the men and for us people we are getting those lovely herbal teas men's wellness basically fertility wellness is coming up so different techniques are there for the man we have we have a sperm dna fragmentation test 
when we when we look at the dna of these pumps we have antioxidants like melatonin we have coq we have carnitines vitamin e vitamin c multiple things then we have imc where we identify those pumps at 63000 x in our batches we spend a long time talking about imc and pixi our embryology gets batch gets actually tired of me when i talk about these things for nearly one hour <clears throat> these are two techniques which were in vogue big vogue <clears throat> and they're good also but now they are losing the sheen magnetic sperm sorting sperm activation looking at the pus cells heated centrifuge tubes uh, centrifuge machines in case we do these things does it add on to the benefit this is what these are all the adjuvants which cost money so we have to see in case we do it is it worthwhile doing it is it worthwhile using a magnet to sort out the sperm is it worthwhile buying a centrifuge machine for 1.25 Lakh rupees when an ordinary one is available available for rupees twenty thousand. Should we detect the pus cells and how? Because required magnetic sperm sorting will cost you rupees two thousand. Should you do it when we can do when you can do the whole thing for rupees hundred? Sperm activation is it required when you can? And patient will spend around rupees fifteen hundred. It is not required. Micro TC cost rupees. One lakh. Other small surgical sperm retrievals may cost per round rupees twenty thousand. Microfluidics may cost you around rupees three thousand. Is it worthwhile to do for the patient? Single sperm retrification is it worthwhile for the patient and spending rupees ten thousand for this procedure in case required? So there are multiple things which are happening to the men, and sperm retrification does it help? so multiple things which come to your mind and let's see them one by one coming to the male infertility these are the few technologies on which we have to focus add ons we have to focus so there can be doing something like a micro tc with a simple tisa or pisa use of microfluidics is it beneficial or not varicose veins should be operated or not should be diagnosed or not by using ultrasound this is the problem pus cells how to identify should we detect reactive oxygen species and how is dna fragmentation worthwhile or not doing sperm vitrification with a vis sperm freezing which is better is it good to use heated centrifuge machines or not this is a matter using magnetic cell separator or using hba binding slide where we Coat the slides with high uranon, on which the sperms can bind like this, and we can pick them up because they are they are of better quality sperms. These few techniques are available. I have to cover my talk in next around ten minutes, so I can't go into the details. Do we do we cover? We spend a lot of time in our classes when we have them. So this is my evidence. I may differ from the evidence which is given in the books, but I'll talk about them also. So MC and PICSI. MC means high magnification is red, not recommended. Pixi is not recommended. In case patient has got a previous fertilization failure, then we can do Pixi, but don't offer it in every patient. It costs money, and this basically works with high lower non binding method. Antioxidants, we have evidence that we can use them selectively in the male, though it is given in amber. It is given in amber. but i think there the new evidence says we can use it dna fragmentation is in amber but i say green because we should know how to pick up the patient because we have the good patient selection this can be done for all the patients then heated centrifuge machines amber not actually required pus cell detection must must do it in every patient magnetic cell sorting is an amber you may do it i don't recommend this for all the patients sperm activation yes whenever indicated whenever we have low sperm motility this can be done it works very well microfluidics green do it in case it is indicated microtesa green in case we have an indication when fsh is very high lh is high testicular size is low microtesa is good but don't do it for any routine patient single sperm vitrification uh somebody is writing on my screen uh, please avoid doing that uh 
single form verification is in amber but in case indicated you can definitely do it so this is a way when we give the parameters and guidelines ultrasound scrotum is red don't do it until indicated we have seen that nearly every patient who comes to us undergoes an ultrasound scrotum that should not be done varicose vein surgery actually not to be done it is in red but i say that in tertiary center when they come when indicated when the sperm count is low lh fsh is on the higher side varicose vein is present it can be done but otherwise avoid doing varicose vein surgery for all the patients the only thing which can be done for the male i really recommend is doing their examination in case you examine the men you can actually take a call of doing the further testing for him but unfortunately this is what is not being done for the patients so this is what in the end we see what is actually recommended we can do dna fragmentation index we can look for the pus cells treat ros with antioxidants wherever required and we can do microfluidics the rest all techniques are quite debatable now looking at the british fertility policy and committee report and this committee report came in 2015 let's see what this report says and this report is very very clear in case you look at this report that it says that there is no convincing evidence of using ivig there is lack of evidence somebody has marked on my screen can you please remove these marks i'll be very grateful to you uh, there is lack of evidence to you Evidence, lack of evidence, lack of evidence here to use intralipids, lack of evidence to use steroids, lack of evidence using nitroglycerin, lack of evidence to use other adjuncts like beta adrenergic blockers and progesterones for uterine relaxants, lack of proven efficacy. in use of routine use of aspirin lack of robust evidence to use a low molecular weight heparin does not recommend routine use of growth hormone lack of evidence to use dhea and then in case you look at it it talks very beautifully about there is lack of evidence to recommend estrogen for priming or for endometrial development metformin may have some beneficial effect in the woman with pcos only for ovarian hyperstimulation but not as an adjuvant to treat pcos coming to very nice article in uh, by dr mohan kamat let's see what he says this is that screening hysteroscopy is amber it was not recommended but recently few articles have come with low evidence that it can be done but overall there is not much of role of doing screening hysteroscopy this we have to know dha amber no concrete evidence low low evidence when we have a dispute between americano americano coffee which i told you which is black versus cappuccino or mocha testosterone amber growth hormone amber antioxidant for the male partner amber for cochrane has said we can use it but overall evidence which he has found is it is amber seminal plasma red not to be used prp amber this is what he has brought out growth hormone amber aspirin is red heparin is red and antioxidants for female partner are red. so for female partner there are no no evidence at all that we can give any any, any antioxidants male it is amber for female it is actually none so this is the way i am going to i'm i'm going to end my talk and leave some thoughts for you what are treatment add ons and we have that we should we have to know what should we add what treatment we add 
principles of responsible innovation orang naik kertas itu mbak you have to follow most of the data to support these adjuvants the talk is primarily anecdotal heterogeneous and underpowered studies they are underpowered anecdotal and heterogeneous patient deserves consistent evidence based treatment in case we don't do it we will lose patient's trust and this is not right patient expectations market forces and online information should not make us move towards these drugs a drop of the hat pressure from patients and the commercial interests <clears throat> we should draw a balance and do what is right for the patient and not get carried away by carried away by what patients want they can be effective in improving the chances of having a baby but we have to get to the data that is it do we have the complete support that they are having increased live birth rate or the clinical pregnancy rate till that we don't have that don't add on these drugs in case you add on tell them that it is for research and it's an experimental and you're paying for an experimental treatment on your side this you must do it's an additional cost for the patient on top of the routine cycle of proven fertility treatment i think that's it time has come for us to innovate to progress to learn with this i end my talk here and i invite you again for our next curtain raiser on hsg on 1st of august thank you very much i'm ending my ending my talk here time is 9:30 thanks for with me i really enjoyed your company you're keeping the session on for discussion now and discussion can always be focused on red amber and green <clears throat>